upstairs. When I was a child, I lived in a rented two-floor house. My father and mother both had to work, so I was often alone in the house when I got back from school. One day, I was delayed on my way back from school. It was early evening when I got home, and the house was dark. I called out, Mom? And heard a faint voice say, from upstairs. I called my mom again, and again got the same answer. Yes. It sounded like she was calling me, but it sounded so faint. So I started climbing up the stairs. When I reached the first floor, I called her once more and heard it again. Yes. This time, it was coming from the back bedroom. I felt a certain uneasiness and wanted to see my mother as soon as possible, so I hurried closer to the back room. I was about to open the bedroom door when suddenly I heard the sound of the front door downstairs opening. My mother came in, carrying lots of shopping bags. Sweetie, I'm back. Are you home? She called out to me in a bright voice. Hearing her voice, I completely regained my confidence and ran downstairs. Just then, I happened to glance over my shoulder towards the back bedroom. The door to the room slowly opened with a creak. For a moment, I saw something strange in the gap of the door. The pale face of a man was staring directly at me. The White Arm One story concerned a lady named Margaret who lives in a beautiful old Georgian house near here. Her family has many ghostly encounters there, but there was one that made my skin crawl when I heard it. She had stayed up late to watch a TV show and her husband and two daughters were upstairs in bed. She became aware of the latch on the door to the lounge lifting very, very slowly. She knew she was alone downstairs. She wasn't scared by this, just curious. Then the door opened very slowly, inch by inch. As she watched, a huge white arm came around the door and begun to slowly beckon to her. Margaret said she was frozen to the spot. Whoever or whatever was behind the door must have been enormous. The angle the arm was at meant that the owner had to be over seven feet tall, and the arm was so white, so very, very white. She said by this time she was terrified. The arm continued to beckon to her, and then it withdrew behind the door, but the door stayed open. She summoned all of her courage and forced herself to get up and go to the door. But nobody was there. The room was completely empty. As she told us the story, my eyes were glued to the door in question and I could feel my arms break out in goosebumps. Basement Room Years ago, my family went on vacation in Cape Cod and we rented a small old house to stay in for two weeks. On the main floor was the kitchen, the living room, and a bathroom. The bedrooms were on the second floor. There was a basement room downstairs with a washer, a dryer, a sofa, and a television. On the first night, we were all awakened by a terrible scream from my sister's bedroom. When my dad burst into her room and turned on the light, He found her sitting up in bed, screaming and crying. My parents sat with her and comforted her until she finally calmed down enough to tell them what had scared her. She said that she had been awakened in the middle of the night by a horrible stench. When she opened her eyes, she had seen the entire bedroom soaked in blood from top to bottom. There was blood all over the floor bloody handprints on the walls, 
and blood spatter all over the ceiling. We all thought she had just been having a nightmare, but she refused to go back into her bedroom and stayed in our parents' room for the remainder of the holiday. One evening, my mother was cooking dinner in the kitchen upstairs, and my father had gone out on an errand in a nearby town. My sister and I were in the basement room watching TV, when all of a sudden, the light bulb popped and the TV went off, leaving us in complete darkness. The basement was unfurnished and had old stone walls, making it a bit of a creepy place. For a few seconds, we just froze, not knowing what to do. Then we started to smell something horrible. It was a terrible stench, and when it hit our noses, we felt nauseous. It smelled like rotting flesh. The smell quickly grew worse and worse, and then when we heard a scratching in the darkness, Something seemed to be scratching at the floor or the walls. We screamed and began scrambling around in the pitch black, trying to find the door. Eventually, we managed to open the door and ran upstairs, screaming to our mother. We kept telling her about the disgusting smell, and we heard something scratching and scraping around down there. My mom eventually agreed to go down to the basement, replace the bulb, and check out the source of the horrible smell. She took a flashlight and a new bulb and disappeared into the darkened basement. As we waited for her at the top of the stairs, we expected her to return quickly, but she seemed to be down there for an eternity. Suddenly, we saw her emerge out of the darkness and come running up the stairs. She slammed the basement door behind her and bolted it fast as she could. She turned to us and we could see in her face had completely drained of color. Her eyes were wide with fear, and she just said, I don't want you going down there again. Then she went into the kitchen and called the police. We overheard her conversation on the phone and managed to figure out that she seen someone down in the basement room. As we waited for the police to come, we huddled together in the living room, staring at the basement door. At any moment, we expected to hear someone banging on it or trying to break it down. My mother refused to tell us what she had seen. When the police arrived, my mother greeted them at the front door and ushered them inside. She unbolted the basement door and they went down into the darkness with their flashlights out and their guns drawn. They searched the entire basement room but found nothing. There was no other way out of the basement, no windows, no doors. Whatever was down there would have had to come up through the basement door. After the police left, my mother finally revealed what she had seen down there in the pitch black basement room. As she spoke, she became very still and very quiet. She said that she had been changing the light bulb downstairs when she began to smell the horrible stench we had described to her. Then she started to hear a faint scratching noise. She shone her flashlight around the room and suddenly caught sight of something crouched between the washer and dryer. It was a man, crouched on all fours. His clothes were tattered, his hair was wild and tangled, and his face didn't look human. It was twisted, an expression of pure hatred. In that split second, he looked up at my mother, his eyes reflecting the beam from her flashlight. Then he suddenly crawled forward and disappeared through a wall. When my mother saw him simply vanish into thin air, she dropped the flashlight and ran. After that, none of us would go down in the basement. We kept the door locked and bolted. Every night, we slept in our parents' room and locked that door too. We cut our holiday short a few days later, and we just drove home. Baguio Hotel There's a famous ghost story in the Philippines about an old hotel in Baguio, a popular vacation spot. 
They say there's a room in the hotel that is never ever occupied. Baguio is famous for holding conventions and one week, the place was very busy and all the hotels were fully booked. There was a young woman who was left with no choice but to take the room. She was brushing her teeth in front of the bathroom mirror and after she gargled, she saw a reflection in the mirror of a hag-like woman standing behind her with long scraggly hair and a gnarled pale face. She was so scared that she closed her eyes and recited the Lord's Prayer. After she finished the prayer, she opened her eyes again and to her surprise, the figure was still behind her in the mirror. Worse still, the old hag was winding her finger through the girl's hair while reciting the Lord's Prayer in a mocking voice. The Demon of Detroit It all started in the early 1960s when Mr. and Mrs. Adams moved into the house in Detroit, Michigan. They had five small children and a pet dog. Almost as soon as they moved in, the family seemed to sense that there was something wrong with the back bedroom. All of the children avoided it and even the dog refused to go inside. It was a tiny room with just enough space for a bed and a built-in closet in the corner. Mr. Adams worked in the night shift at the Cadillac assembly plant, so when he came home in the morning, he would sleep in the back bedroom. It was far enough away from the rest of the house that he thought no one would disturb him. However, sleeping in the bedroom always gave him a strange and uneasy feeling. Almost immediately, he began to experience horrible nightmares. They were so vivid and real that he would wake up screaming and shaking with fear. In one of the ghastly nightmares, he dreamed that he opened the closet door and the blood-soaked and mutilated body of a woman fell out. When his mother came to visit the family, they let her sleep in the back bedroom. The next morning, she said she couldn't get a wink of sleep. Her face was pale and her whole body was shaking. She claimed she had heard terrible sounds in the room that went on all night long, as if someone was trying to break in. She refused to sleep in the bedroom again and decided to cut her stay short and go home. After that, Mr. and Mrs. Adams began to realize that something dark and loathsome was lurking in the back bedroom. Then an old friend of the family came to town and they gave him the room for the night. They didn't mention a thing to him about their own unpleasant experiences in the room. Shortly after midnight, the man was lying in bed when he was awakened by the feeling of someone turning him over. He opened his eyes and saw someone standing outside the bedroom door. It was a woman with long hair, but she had her back to him. She was wearing a short fur coat and a blue dress. He got up and started walking towards her, but all of a sudden, every light in the house went off. He was stumbling around in the darkness, and when the lights came back on, he found himself in the kitchen. Mrs. Adams was there, washing her hair in the kitchen sink. All of a sudden, they heard a terrible, unearthly wailing sound that left both of them speechless with fright, and a sickening smell filled the room. Then, the heavy trapdoor in the kitchen floor that led to the dirt basement started opening and slamming back down. Terrified, they called the police. Within minutes, a few officers were searching the house from top to bottom, but they didn't find anything. The next morning, when Mr. Adams got home from the plant, his wife and friend were waiting for him. As calmly as they could, they told him what they had experienced during the night, and he didn't believe them. That evening, he decided to sleep in the back bedroom. He was just about to drift off when he heard someone moving in the room. He thought it was his wife, but when he called her name, there was no answer. 
He turned over to look and saw a hideous face just inches from him. It was the most horrible thing he had ever seen. The eyes stared past him and the mouth moved to talk, but all that came out was a hissing sound and a terrible stench. Mr. Adams came running out of the back bedroom, his eyes wide and screaming with terror. He was ripping handfuls of his own hair from his head as he ran. His friend tried to grab him and hold him down, but Mr. Adams went berserk, kicking and fighting and screaming. Finally, his wife and his friend managed to throw a blanket over him and wrestle him to the floor. The house was filled with the same nauseating stench they had smelled the night before. An hour later, he had calmed down enough to tell his family about the ghastly and indescribable face he had seen. The husband and wife grabbed their sleeping children from their beds and fled into the night. The next morning, they all moved in with Mrs. Adams' parents in a different part of Detroit. The Adams family had to admit defeat, and they left the house and the back bedroom to the horrific entity that was lurking in it, the demon of Detroit.